What up, what up all? Welcome, welcome to another episode from QTPTutorial.net. That's our site. Don't forget it. Go there to become a QTP guru. So today, I'm so excited to have everyone here because we are continuing on our amazing journey where I'm going to teach you to identify objects like an expert. We are in session number three. We've already been through two sessions. And if you miss those, I highly recommend that you go back and watch so that you are up to speed. And then you can proceed over here and understand everything that's going on. Anyways, let's jump right in. So today, I wanted to deeply discuss with you guys the object repository. That's where we ended last session. And today I want to show you guys everything about it. So let's go ahead and pull up QTP. And I am going to open an object repository. First, let me get a new test going. And I'm going to open the object repository by either clicking on this or going to resources, object repository. But don't worry about that, guys. Remember, we always strive for the fastest, most efficient methods here. So I'm going to click on this. So here it is, the object repository. One of the key features of QTP and automation. This object repository can be thought of as the brain that holds all of the properties of all of the objects. Okay? So for example, let me pull up Yahoo application here. And let me show you one of the first features of the object repository. This feature is called add object to local. Okay, so you just select this button right here, that's add, and then you should be able to add any object that you want to the repository as such. So let's choose this mail object. You guys see this right away? We get the hierarchy that we learned about, and now I'm just going to click OK. And look what happens. These objects get added to the repository. Okay, if I want to add another object, Sorry, you need the application up. I can go ahead and add this. This is going to be a web edit. Check it out. Okay, so you can just keep adding objects to the application through the object repository. This is very similar to the process of using Object Spy, except Object Spy, if we click on it, gives you first the ability to see the element, the object that you want to select. Did you guys see this? I get to see what I want to select. But add object does not give you that option. You just add it. It just automatically adds. Now, one other thing I want you guys to notice really fast is how QTP automatically assigns names to these objects. So, for example, this is WebEdit P. And this is web element mail. Now, imagine I had many more objects and I wanted to figure out what P is. Because honestly, do you guys know what P is from the application? If you, you know, came back a week later, you would have no idea. But you could easily find out by doing a thing called highlight in application. And that involves this right here. All you have to do is click on it, and it's going to show you the object in the application. Do you guys see that? So that's P. Okay? Now, in the object repository, we have the option to rename our objects. And that's exactly what I want to do because I have no clue what P is. I'm going to call it the search bar. This is whatever you want it to be, okay? Do you guys see that? Now it's going to be called search bar. This mail, web element, that's a good name for it, because if we highlight in the application again, 
It highlights the male, okay? Male web element. So that's fine for us. That's the key to the, the object repository, guys. You want to have descriptive names for your objects so that when you go back, you can easily identify them, okay? Now, another thing I want to mention about the object repositories. There are two types. There's the shared object repository, and there is also the local object repository, okay? Right now, we are working in the local object repository. How do you know that it's a local object repository? Well, it says it right here. I'm not going to get into the shared object repository right now, but we'll definitely touch on it because as I said before, I want to make you guys experts. And making you experts is making sure that I leave nothing behind for you guys. Okay, so anyways, what does it mean? that this is a local object repository. Well, what that means is that it is local to the test and the action, okay? So in QTP, we have many actions. Here we only have one, but we can add many more, and each of them would have a local object repository. And that means that only that action could access those objects. Okay, so if I wanted to use the mail object, I could only use it in action one. If I had action two here, I would not be able to use it because it would be local only to action one. I hope that's clear to you guys. If not, let me know and I can, of course, make more videos and notes to elaborate. So let's continue on the features of the object repository. We have the object spy here. The one I introduced you guys to that already. Very easy. You just, you know, pick any object. Let's get the search button. You guys see that we get all of the hierarchy elements. And notice the icons here, guys. This is a browser icon. This is a page icon. This is a button icon. That's how you know what object type it is. And also, notice this little thing. Does that look familiar? Does it look just like the object repository up here? Well, that's because QTP already knows that it has these objects added to the repository. And so you get to see this. But this one is not added to the repository. And so it doesn't have the object repository symbol there. But it can very easily be added to the repository just by clicking this button. You guys see that? Add object to repository. This is the same thing as doing this, okay? Click on it, boom, now we got the search button. Again, let's highlight just to make sure it's recognizable. Good to go, let's continue. Now, another feature that I wanted to show you guys. This feature is called define new test object, and it is right here. Okay? So if I click on this, it will allow me to create a new object and add some properties to it that I may use to identify it in the application. So sometimes this occurs where object spy is not capable of properly identifying an object, but through a record and run process, it can identify the object for you correctly. It's hard for me to show you this here, but trust me, there will be instances where, for example, you know that some object is maybe a web checkbox, but when you are object spying on it, it is being shown as a web element. So in that instance, you want to define a new test object. So for example, let me show you what I want to do. Let's get our application open. And I want to define this test object, okay? So all I have to do is use object spy. Click on this. Now look, do you guys see that right now? If I use object spy, it shows me that it's a web element. I can go back up one level to access the link. But in some applications, you will not be able to see this. It will show you to use a web element. So if you want to get down 
to the real basis, you may want to use the record method. And let me click on this and see what happens. Do you guys see that? Let me stop it right now. Look, record automatically added this object to my repository, the Yahoo object. Okay? And it identifies it properly as a link. But do you guys see that with object spy, it's showing me a web element. Yes, I can go back up one level and get my link, but like I said, sometimes this is not possible with some applications. So this is just a tip I'm teaching you guys to bear in mind when using Object Spy. So anyways, let's say that I did not know this method and I wanted to identify a new test object, which was that link. Okay, so I'm going to copy these properties. We've seen this before. And let me go ahead and paste them here. Okay. Now, let me close the object spy and let me delete this object just so we can define a new test one. Okay. Click on this right here, define new test object. And then environment, we have to choose web. Class is going to be a link. Name. What do I want to call it? Remember, logical names, guys. I'm going to call it the Yahoo logo link. Yahoo logo. Okay? Now, look. We get some properties here. Just like in the object repository. So let me add some properties. Take a look. Which ones are good to use? You want something that's unique and that's going to stay constant. So, for example, I want to use inner text. Okay. And let's go ahead and grab the inner text. I am going to need to add a description property. Do you guys see that? And let's find inner text right here. Okay. Check it out. Look, I got inner text added here. Now I'm just going to paste, control V, the value. Okay. I'm sure I need more because look, if we try to highlight it, it probably won't work. Sorry, back to notepad. Let me get some other property. Name is also a good property to use. Okay. We don't need this or this or this. And I'm going to add name. And I'm going to give it another value. And let's click add and watch what happens here. Boom. Did you guys see that? Added right there. Okay. But let me close this. Let me show you one thing. And I'm very glad that this happened. Do you guys see how the link was added underneath the browser? You guys see that browser link? But it really should be inside of the page container, right? Just like all the other elements. So let's go and see what happens when we highlight. Test object is not unique because the properties based on the browser and the link do not match up. So now it's a perfect time for me to show you how to move an object. It's very easy. You can use these scissors right here to cut or use control X. Remember guys, keyboard shortcuts, efficiency, better automation engineers. And then I'm going to click here and I'm going to paste with control V. Okay. Now. Do you guys see how it moved in the proper hierarchy? Let's try to highlight it now. Still can't. No problem because we need more unique properties. So let's go ahead and get those. Give Notepad a second to load. Okay, here it is. Let's check out some more unique properties, guys. What can we use here to identify? Well, let me tell you that all of these properties up here are bad. Why? Because they will change. We'll get to that in the future. I'm going to use HTML tag, which is A. Guys, always copy and paste your properties, no matter how easy it is. When you've had a long night and you've been working for 15 hours, you can easily make a lot of mistakes, causing you a lot of headaches and problems. So I always copy and paste whenever I can. 
So we need to add one more description. So you can always do that here by selecting your object. I want the Yahoo logo, which is a link. Click right there. And we wanted HTML tag. Click OK. And let's give its value Control V to paste. OK? Now let's try and highlight. Still not enough. Do you guys see that? QTP can't identify it because we need more properties. You guys see this works, but this Yahoo link does not work. Okay, let's get another property. Now you guys get to see the object identification process in action. What else can I add here to make this object unique? Let's take a look at these properties. In fact, let me expand this. And looking at all of these properties, I see nothing good. I see no more unique properties that I can use. So now comes another lesson I wanted to teach you guys. That more properties for identification is not always better. Because as you guys see, I have three here, and I still can't identify it. Now, let me see something. What if I add this text property? Let's see what happens. And get paste its value. And I actually am going to remove name and inner text. Let's see what happens. As you guys saw, it also could not be identified. So what is the solution here? Well, one solution is to go for what's called an ordinal identifier. Because we have figured out that the test object description is not unique. Okay? And it's not unique because this object does not have any properties to make it unique. So the easiest solution right now is to give it an ordinal identifier. It is a dangerous solution, but it is the easiest. Let me show you guys how to do that. So you have to come over here to ordinal identifier, and you pick one. There are two types here for a browser. There is an extra one, and I'm going to choose index. I'll get into this ID in the next video, but you guys will see. So now this index has a value of zero. Let me go ahead and try to identify the object. Boom. There it is. Got my object. So what I wanted to teach you guys through this was that more property identifications and their values are not better. And that the key is to find a combination of unique properties with unique values to make that object unique. And wow, guys, I've noticed that we are at the 20 minute mark and we need to end now. So thanks for staying tuned with me. We are going to progress in the next session. All right, guys, see you in session number four. Take care.